Hello, New Song Church. My name is Samuel Kim, and I'm currently a sophomore at the University of Texas at Dallas and a member of New Song English Ministry. I have been given the opportunity to share a message from the Word of God to everyone. Let me pray for us before we start. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this time that you have given us to learn about you and your Word. As we read from this passage, let us gain wisdom and strengthen our hearts to glorify you and to be more like you. We thank you for what you have done on the cross for us and for everything that you have provided us with in our lives. We thank you for all these things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I will be sharing a message from Leviticus chapter 6. If you have your Bibles, please turn with me to Leviticus chapter 6. We will be reading from verses 1 to 7. Again, that is Leviticus chapter 6, verses 1 to 7. If everyone is there, let's read it together. Ready? Begin. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, If anyone sins and commits a breach of faith against the Lord by deceiving his neighbor in a matter of deposit or security, or through robbery, or if he has oppressed his neighbor, or has found something lost and lied about it, swearing falsely, and any of the things that people do and sin thereby, if he has sinned and has realized his guilt and will restore what he took by robbery or what he got by oppression or the deposit that was committed to him or the lost thing that he found or anything about which he has sworn falsely, he shall restore it in full and shall add a fifth to it and give it to him to whom it belongs on the day he realizes his guilt. And he shall bring to the priest as his compensation to the Lord a ram without blemish out of the flock or its equivalent for a guilt offering. And the priest shall make atonement for him before the Lord and he shall be forgiven for any of the things that one may do and thereby become guilty. Amen. Just as we read these verses, let us look at chapter 6 as a whole. Within this chapter, the author writes that there are three offerings, burnt offerings, grain offerings, and sin offerings. So what do these three offerings mean? These offerings were a way for people to be forgiven of their sins by having an animal be sacrificed in their place or give a sense of peace and reverence to God. My first point of this message is that we constantly need God because we constantly sin. If we look at verses 9 and 13, it says, Command Aaron and his sons, saying, This is the law of the burnt offering. The burnt offering shall be on the hearth on the altar all night until the morning, and the fire of the altar shall be kept burning on it. Jumping to verse 13, it says, Fire shall be kept burning on the altar continually. It shall not go out. The key word that is mentioned in my first point is constant. The fire needed to be burning constantly because it is a reminder that we sin constantly, so we need to seek and ask God for forgiveness constantly. We have to strive to sin less. My second point of this message is that we have to have a clear response to our sin by giving reverence to God and be like Christ. If we look back to verses 6 and 7, it says, And he shall bring to the priest as his compensation to the Lord a ram without blemish out of the flock or its equivalent for a guilt offering. And the priest shall make atonement for him before the Lord, and he shall be given for any of the things that one may do and thereby become guilty. The offerings are taken when one has recognized their sins, returned a portion from the wrong that was committed, and reconciled with the other person, God. This shows that we have to love others because it is a direct representation of God's love for us. In addition, let's look at the other two offerings. Looking at verse 15, it says, and one shall take from it a handful of the fine flour of the grain offering and its oil and all the frankincense that is on the grain offering and burn this as its memorial portion on the altar, a pleasing aroma to the Lord. This verse is a key part of the grain offering because it is a memorial portion. A memorial means that it is something that reminds of a person or event, which in this case is God. The priest is giving a food offering to God and God is giving a portion of his food offering to the priest to eat. The role of a priest takes up a lot of their time throughout the day, so they don't have time to eat and rest. 
God is caring for them and feeding them because it shows His love and thankfulness to the priests. Next is the sin offering. If we look at verse 25, it says, Speak to Aaron and his sons, saying, This is the law of the sin offering. In the place where the burnt offering is killed, shall the sin offering be killed before the Lord. It is most holy. The sin offering is a direct response to our sin because it had to be killed before the Lord. Verse 30 says, But no sin offering shall be eaten from which any blood is brought into the tent of meeting to make atonement in the holy place. It shall be burned up with fire. It needs to be brought to a place of holiness to give the offering directly to God. This passage spoke to me because it reminds me that I'm not perfect and there are going to be days when I sin, but through the grace of God, I am forgiven. Just as the priest sacrificed the most clean and unblemished animal, Jesus was our perfect and ultimate sacrifice because he was perfect and sinless. He had to take our place, emphasis on the word had. My main point of this message is that when we sin, we have to acknowledge it, seek God for forgiveness, and live like Christ. There are so many ways to live like Christ, whether it is to show love to others, help others, encourage others, or do quiet times. We should thank God for sending Christ to die for us because there's only a finite amount of animals in this world, but Christ's sacrifice is infinite and eternal. Let's pray. Dear God, as we have read your word in Leviticus chapter 6, help us continue to seek your love, grace, and guidance constantly. We thank you for sending Jesus to us to be our ultimate sacrifice to save us from our sins. Help us remind ourselves of the cross and turn our hearts to you always. Many of us had a difficult time because of the pandemic, but I pray that you will bless us with strength and endurance to keep us running on this marathon. Thank you for everything that you have done for us. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.